If you thought women's hairstyles are the only thing that changed over the last century, think again. Bikinis have undergone a major transformation over the decades, so now that the summer heat is in full blast, we're taking a look back at what women have worn from the 1910s to today. From full-on grandma bathing suits to the skin-tight bikinis you see on Kim Kardashian, you're going to love the history of the bikini. So let's take a dive into how much swimsuits have changed over the last hundred years. We're just gonna keep going through different eras. 1910s. In the early 1900s, women's swimsuits were a lot different than what we're used to seeing today. They were more like knee-length dresses over bloomers. But that's nothing compared to the swimsuits of the 1800s, which looked an awful lot like bathing gowns made of wool that barely showed any skin at all. Some of them even had weights sewn into the hems so that the dress wouldn't float up when women walked in the water. In the 1910s, swimsuits became a lot more form-fitting and had shorter skirts. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, women were being punished for wearing swimsuits that the law deemed was too revealing. Like when Australian swimmer Annette Kellerman was arrested on a beach in Boston, Massachusetts for wearing a knee-length swimsuit that showed her arms, legs, and neck. In 1913, Carl Jansen reportedly invented the first functional two-piece bathing costume made of wool, which came with a cap and matching stockings. By this point, women were ready to ditch skirts and long sleeves in order to bare their arms and legs, but they still had a long long way to go. 1920s. By the 1920s, swimwear became far more form-fitting and shorter, and women loved it because tighter bathing suits made swimming more comfortable. Soon, deep boat necks or v-necks became the latest trend and the armholes in swimsuits got a whole lot bigger. But those weren't the only changes that women were grateful for. The swimsuit colors also got a lot brighter, which allowed them to pick a color that suited their personalities. Of course, some things didn't change right away. Women were still wearing swim caps and special hats that that had chin straps to keep them from flying off from a gust of wind. Another thing that didn't change right away were the swimsuit regulations that were still being enforced in this era. So women had to be very careful about wearing something that was too short or too revealing at the beach. Which is why Charlie Chaplin's first wife, actress Mildred Harris, was seen applying makeup on set around 1923, wearing a swimsuit that looked more like a nightgown. Of course, it was only a matter of time before the swimmer got another major makeover. 1930s. By the 1930s, swimsuits started looking a lot more like one-piece men's swimsuits. Showing some skin became a little more socially acceptable. However, the belly button still remained covered. Form-fitting looks became even more popular, and women were opting for one-piece swimsuits that showed their backs and were cut higher in the leg area. But instead of wool, which was a stiffer and more uncomfortable material, these new bathing suits were made of rubber-based materials. In fact, a company named Mabs of Hollywood introduced a type of suit made from latex, an elastic-based textile that made swimwear far more comfortable and lighter too. So naturally, big stars like Betty Davis were photographed wearing these form-fitting, comfy suits that were all the rage. Actress Betty Grable was catching some rays in one of these one-piece swimsuits during a shoot in 1937. You can clearly see how comfy women were with this new style of bathing suits. 1940s. By the time the 1940s rolled around, the bikini concept really took off. French designer Louis Riard invented the world's first two-piece string bikini from 30 square inches of fabric. This style of swimsuit was very risque because it was the first to reveal a bit of the midriff area. The swimwear ensemble consisted of a halter top and a pair of shorts. And there was a major historical reason why designers like Riard had chosen to use such little fabric in their design. During the 1940s, World War II pushed people to conserve fabric when making clothes by using less of it, hence why bikinis got more and more revealing during this time period. And while the one-piece style from the 1930s was long gone, one-piece swimsuits were still very cool, but they were modified to look like a short, tight dress with a v-neck and thin straps. Others looked more like a bathing suit that had been wrapped around the body like the one actress Lucille Ball wore while posing for a shot in 1943. 1950s. In the 1950s, the style of the one-piece and two-piece suits from the 1940s hadn't changed much, but the material used to make them did an epic makeover. Instead of rubber-based materials, designers started using nylon and elastic to make the suits more comfortable. And it wasn't long before major celebrities fell in love with these new bikinis like the time Marilyn
Marilyn Monroe wore that iconic polka dot bikini swimsuit in 1951. Meanwhile, that very same year, the stunning Ava Gardner wore a strapless two-piece bikini while shooting the film Pandora and the Flying Dutchman. And if you're wondering what Marilyn Monroe was wearing in 1955, well, she made quite a splash while laying on her stomach in a two-piece bikini while waves crashed on the shore. That same year, Hollywood siren Grace Kelly was photographed lounging on a beach towel in France, and she looked divine. But Bridget Bardot made heads turn at the 1957 Cannes Film Festival wearing a more revealing and shorter bikini in the south of France. 1960s By the 1960s, the SoCal-style beach party bikinis had gone mainstream in America, especially after Brian Hyland released his hit single, Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini, in 1960. Soon, bikinis were popping up everywhere, even in Hollywood. Actress Joan Black wore this two-piece bikini on the set of Blue Hawaii in 1961 while standing next to Elvis Presley. She kind of outshined the king of rock and roll, right? And the bikini continued taking Hollywood by storm when actress Ursula Andress walked up from the sea wearing a belted white two-piece bikini in the James Bond film Dr. No. But it was Raquel Welsh who really made a splash in 1966 when she wore a fur bikini for the film One Million Years BC. In fact, the swimsuit she wore became even more famous than the movie. 1970s In the 1970s, string bikinis rose in popularity, which totally topped Rayard's revealing designs from the 1940s. The new models allowed people to show off their bodies more, and they came in a variety of vibrant patterns, so naturally, everyone wanted one. Then, the thong bikini bottoms with a low waist and half-string back were introduced in Brazil in 1974. And as you can imagine, that raised some eyebrows. This 1970s style left very little to the imagination imagination, but not everyone was on board with the look. Just ask late actress Farrah Fawcett. In 1976, a Cleveland poster company arranged to do a photo shoot of Farrah to promote her celebrity status on Charlie's Angels. But she wasn't comfortable in the bikinis of that era, which she felt left her very exposed. So she opted for a red one-piece swimsuit that was in her closet. The poster company hated it, but it was ultimately Farrah who had the final say in the matter, and the poster has since sold over 12 million copies. 1980s In the 1980s, bikini bottoms were cut even higher than any other era, so they became even more popular, which is why bikinis accounted for 20% of swimsuit sales in the United States. That's pretty impressive. The style featured a scooped neckline and thong-style bikini bottom, and because it was the 80s, animal prints and bright neon colors were all the rage. But the bikini became popularized even more thanks to that gold medal bikini that Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia wore in Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. It was designed by Aggie Gerard Rogers. The top had a plunging neckline that tied behind the neck and back with a string, and the bottom was a copper plate at the front while the back was covered by a red silk loincloth. In the blink of an eye, the gold medal bikini became a fashion staple in the hearts of Star Wars fans everywhere. 1990s in the 1990s, swimwear designers went for a more minimalistic approach that featured cleaner lines, and that is when the tankini was born. This super comfy swimsuit was modern and stylish in an unconventional and striking way, and they came in super cool patterns and bright colors. But the one-piece athletic Speedo-style bikini was pretty popular too, and we all know who to thank for that. By 1995, the red swimsuit had become iconic with its high-cut legs and a low tank top neckline, but the suit really grew on people when Pamela Anderson started racing in slow motion across the beach. Every week, fans would tune into the hit series Baywatch just to watch her rush out of the lifeguard tower in her skin-tight one-piece to rescue a swimmer in distress. The show could have easily been named Babe Watch thanks to all of the gorgeous beauties that left audiences in desperate need of some CPR. 2000s. Although designer Anne Cole is credited with inventing the tankini, the style that began in the late 1990s grew even more so in the early 2000s. The tankini brought modesty back to the bikini concept, with the top half resembling a standard tank top while the bottom was similar to a standard bikini bottom, but the style was considered anything but ordinary. In fact, the triangle tops and boy shorts were so trendy that they were featured quite a lot in the film Blue Crush, and one of the best perks of the tankini was that 
that the tops and the bottoms were sold separately, so women were able to mix and match the style and color of their swimwear. But in 2003, Demi Moore proved that the two-piece swimsuit will never go out of style when she walked out of the ocean in a revealing black top and bottom piece suit in Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. 2010s. For decades, swimwear shopping was a vulnerable space for women. This was mainly because customers didn't feel like their bodies fit into society's very narrow idea of what the perfect body was supposed to look like. But putting on a swimsuit at the pool or the beach wasn't so difficult by 2010, finally, because that's when swimmer designers started making body-inclusive bikinis that encouraged and were made for women of any size. And soon, everyone found themselves wearing bikinis that looked great and were comfortable, as there were so many styles to choose from. You could go for a vintage style cut shorts and spaghetti string bikini, or you could rock a two-piece tiny bikini and put on a cute cover-up at the bottom, like Kylie Jenner who opted for a floral print Dior bikini set while yachting with her family. 2020s. Designers are always looking for new ways to accentuate the female body, so one of the predictions for 2020 in swimsuit trends is the addition of underwire to add some extra lift to the upper body. But there are also a mixture of tropical prints, cutouts and retro styles that make everyone feel like they're on vacation, even if you're just lounging in your backyard. And if anyone knows how to do that, it's Kim Kardashian West. The reality star has always rocked different swimsuit styles, no matter the color, shape, or design. Like in January of 2020, when she went to Cabo and took a jaw-dropping photo sitting on some steps in a two-piece white swimsuit. Do you think swimwear inclusivity has helped women of all sizes feel confident about going to the beach? What type of swimsuit makes you feel beautiful and comfortable? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to The Taco.